going to teach you how to use Kden Live so well that you can outclass people who are paying for video editing software. Everything you see right now, including this video, was edited exclusively in Kden Live, and here are just a couple of the things I like so much about this program. I can edit with just my keyboard in the same way that you can with software like Premiere Pro. I can use it on my ThinkPad with zero lag due to its automatic handling of proxy clips and a little shell script I made to transfer my projects back and forth. It has an absurdly good visual effects library for simply being a non-linear video editor, and I genuinely think it is the cream of the crop when it comes to free and open source video editing, but I'll still give you an honest take as well on how it compares to its proprietary cousins. I know you already know your way around a video editor, but for anyone who doesn't, here's the shortest possible introduction to Caden Live's workflow. Create a new project, import your footage into the project bin and manage it there. By the way, you can also search for stock clips with some free online resources directly integrated into Caden Live. You've got all of your basic editing tools as well as fine control over your timeline's behavior and settings. And you can either use default workspaces or set up a custom workspace with things like your project monitor, clip monitor, effects stack, compositions, etc. Okay, basics done. Now let's get your workflow speed way faster. Number one, learn to properly use in and out points as well as insert and overwrite. Now that concept is known by a number of different names and it can get kind of confusing, so let me break it down for you in a really simple way. I have some footage of me walking. I want a clip that starts at a certain point and ends at a certain point. I don't need the entire piece of footage. Where it starts is the in point, where it ends is the out point. So I'm gonna mark those two points and then I'm only going to insert that particular clip of the footage into my timeline. Kitten Live fully supports an in and out system as well as insert and overwrite modes. The basic concept here is that instead of dragging around footage with your mouse and using your mouse to trim it, get it in the right place, etc., you're going to use the I and O keys to mark the points that you want and then you'll navigate back to your timeline with T and insert or overwrite write your footage in the right place. This method has two key advantages. First of all, it's going to be a lot faster when you want to get precision on exactly where you're chopping up your clips. And secondly, you can shift this part of your workflow to be majority keyboard, meaning you're not going to have to deal with picking up your hand, moving it to the mouse every couple seconds. And yeah, learning to use video editing software properly is pretty darn hard and I am far from perfect at it myself. But that is the direction you want to go in if you really want to improve your editing. Number two, I want you to take a look at me working on this project file and see if you can keep track of what's happening, because I sure can't. I think there's four things to do here to get this way more organized. First, look how much of a difference it makes when I actually bother renaming all of my footage files instead of just leaving my camera's default naming scheme. But I still have clips staggered everywhere, and that's for two reasons. First of all, I do honestly like the visual separation, and it helps me keep a better mental picture of what's happening in the timeline. But a lot of the reason I have these staggered is because they're composed together, or I want them fading in and out of each other. So I can fix that really easily just by using sequences. A sequence is like a tiny timeline that behaves as a clip, and Caden Life does fully support nested sequencing, which is inserting one sequence into another one. And look how much cleaner this project is, even with just a few of those messy stacks converted into sequences. Now I can take advantage of another feature of Caden Live here, which is to quickly send my in-out zone to a sub-clip in the project bin. If I have a piece of footage that I've chopped into a bunch of different clips to use later in my timeline, I can go ahead and organize those zones directly under that original piece of footage. And something I've started doing more recently is actually using guides and project notes. You can add in guides as well as categories for those guides and you can skip between them with hotkeys. And Caden Live's project notes allow you to embed time codes, which makes everything a lot more organized than my usual habit of taking notes in NeoVim. And okay, these are all features that you would expect from a good non-linear video editor, but let me show you a few things that I think Caden Live actually does better than its proprietary cousins. This is the extremely intuitive dedicated titling tool, and I'm pretty sure it actually packs in more features than what Premiere gives you. Granted, it's been a while since I've used Premiere, so take that with a grain of salt, but seriously, I can't think of anything else that I would want in this tool. 
Here's how to do something really easily in Caden Live that I always find super annoying in other editors. Inserting B-roll into your timeline without actually also inserting the audio. I'm gonna go on my B-roll and I'm gonna select an in and out point just with I and with O for the in versus out. And I'll go back to my timeline just by pressing T and I'll navigate to wherever I wanna put this B-roll in. I'm just gonna press um, Shift T and Shift A to arm this particular track. And I'm gonna press B to insert my footage here without shifting down the rest of my footage later in the timeline and say I wanted to undo that and actually shift all my footage I could just press V instead and you can see that now shifted my footage there but the important thing happening here is that I'm actually not inserting the audio off of this b-roll clip which is vital when you're putting in b-roll I already have my audio tracks done now you might have noticed that a number of the key bindings I just did were vim key bindings and that's because I have all of mine set just use Control alt comma and you can open up the key bindings menu and set whatever you want I will publish my own scheme on my git hub if you want to use it do be aware that some of the key bindings i just went over were part of my scheme rather than defaults but caden live does offer you the option to go ahead and use premiere pro's keyboard scheme if you want to do that or of course you can set your own fully custom vim scheme and by the way, Caden Live offers you a great configuration menu, but there's two settings I would recommend taking a look at. Open up configuration with control shift comma, and first of all, enabling built-in effects. And if you're used to Adobe Premiere Pro, you're gonna want this. So what this does is on every single clip, both my source clips and my timeline clips, I now have these two effects. They are disabled by default, so they're not using resources or anything like that, but I could go ahead and enable them if I want them. And I do use these a lot of the time. So this is really useful to have just sitting there by default. And additionally, the other setting you're going to want to handle is proxy clips. So if you're either using lower end hardware like my laptop, or you're working with a lot of 4K footage, this is going to be extraordinarily useful. And the beauty of Caden Live is that it handles it for you automatically, unlike many editors which don't, and then that becomes a major pain point of editing quick break to show you how to make your own Caden Live color schemes. So your color scheme files are just going to reside inside of local share and then color dash schemes. And I have my own color scheme file, but you should have two different breeze default colors in there that you can just copy from and edit as you wish. These are just using RGB color codes. And if you're not sure how to work with these, I would recommend the pastel utility. You can probably just get it on your distro's package manager. And what that's going to do is if I do like pastel color pink or something like that, I can get the hex code, the RGB RGB code. It also allows you to mix colors, combine colors, that sort of thing. And when I go back over to Caden Live, I can just go into settings, color scheme, and I can select whichever I want. And here, tendency is my custom color scheme. And yeah, Caden Live isn't a true VFX application in the way that something like Adobe After Effects is, but you can still get some really, really sick VFX level shots if you know the tricks and the secrets to do it. So let's start by talking about this shot. I've got some composited footage here. This is a shot of me standing there with a shot of the moon in the background and if I actually disable that track you'll see the power of compositing footage. I just have some basic color effects and some pixelization on this shot but then when I re-enable the shot of me standing there we suddenly have a really cool looking thing and sure I go crazy with the color effects but there's a lot of power hidden in compositions. Caden Live gives you a number of different methods for using compositions as well and this is one of the most underrated tricks with regards to getting some really cool looking shots out of this application. You can keyframe the defish effect to add a really cool transition at the start of your shot. So I can take the defished moon here and then turn it into a normal moon. I also have keyframes going on with saturation as well as color adjustment. But the key thing here too is that you can actually edit your keyframes with your keyboard. I'm just navigating with my keyboard and I could actually go forwards a little bit here and add in another keyframe if I wanted to do that. You are going to have to use your mouse a bit when it comes to setting effect settings, but it's still really useful to be able to do all of your keyframe navigation just with your keyboard. Here is another black magic level trick for you. Using Gaussian blur with edge glow will result in this really cool effect here that is essentially the edges of the blur glowing. And you can automate both of those with keyframes and then you can also do some alpha adjustments and masking to get a shot that looks like this, which yes, Caden Live does support full masking power. And I wanna make a really important point that applies to way more than just video editors. Don't force your workflow to adapt to existing systems. Instead, find small tools that you can integrate like puzzle pieces into a process that respects how you work best. 
I keep my project files in the same directory that I use for YouTube videos, but I have all of my footage on my camera SD card so that it can plug back into my camera. So all I have to do is a tiny little shell script I made called Caden Sync. It's gonna go ahead and pull my latest project file out of Caden Live and send it over to my laptop. It also gives me a friendly little reminder that I have to unplug my drive or my SD card. This is just using rsync, which is a really useful command. I've made a whole video about it if you don't know either why it's useful or how it works. But to show you the script here, if I just pull this up. It's like, uh, I don't know, eight lines. They're super simple. It's just pulling my latest project file out of Caden Labs configuration. It's doing some simple string manipulation to get the parts that I want. And it's simply using rsync to send that project file over to my laptop. And I have a mirror version on my laptop to send it right back. And sure, you could argue that not only does Creative Cloud offer you way more than just that, I also have my own really weird and unique edge case of how I'm actually managing my footage, but I know so many people who pay for these services and aren't even using those features. They're using it for some simple little thing that they could be doing themselves for free. Up until this point, I have done nothing besides Glaze Caden Live, and that's because I genuinely enjoy using it. It's probably the most seamless part of my video creation workflow. But we need to have a real and honest conversation about where it sits both in comparison to other free and open source video editors, as well as in comparison to proprietary and paid editors. And I'm gonna start with this. I don't feel like Caden Live is at all plagued by the same issues that a lot of free and open source creative programs face. It has a ton of features, it has a well-designed user interface, and most importantly, it feels intuitive to use. The only piece of free software that I could ever recommend above it would be Blender, and Blender is actually in a different class entirely. You may or may not have heard that Blender has a really steep learning curve, and I would agree with that. It packs in a ton of professional level features, and that's why it's regarded as one of the standard programs for things like 3D animation and VFX work. It's not just regarded as the free alternative. So do I think Blender is better than Caden Live? Potentially, yeah, but you're probably not going to want to go down that route unless you're also intending to take advantage of the other features Blender offers. And for what it's worth, I've tried almost every single free and open source video editor out there, from Shotcut to Olive to Flowblade, and of course I still use FFmpeg when it's the right tool for the job. So let's talk proprietary. How does Caden Live slot in against something like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve? Well, I'm gonna be honest, I've started to understand what the difference is between a product from a huge company with a massive consumer base versus a product made by a small team and community contributions just out of love for the software. The difference is this. If you're missing that one tiny feature you need, you're gonna have to either add it yourself or stick to proprietary software. So that's what this boils down to. If you have one tiny feature in that proprietary software that you absolutely cannot get away without, and there is no free and open source solution for that, you're basically screwed. You're gonna have to stick to the proprietary software. And do note, I would recommend having a look around to see if you can replicate that feature another way, because that has happened to me a number of times where I was missing a feature, but I found another way to do it. But I really don't think most people are going to be running into a ton of features that they feel like they're missing. If you give Caden Live an honest chance and really learn how to use it to the best of your ability, you can absolutely make products that are just as good, if not better, than people who are using proprietary software. But I do think it's necessary to say that standard professional programs, especially when it comes to creative software, are standards for a reason. Especially when you're working collaboratively, you're gonna have to use the software that you're told to use. That is unfortunately just how it is. And even if not, everybody's gonna have a different place they draw the line in the sand for when they are or aren't willing to use free and open source software. Some people will absolutely never touch proprietary software and other people just pick whatever they feel like the best tool for the job is. So for my friends who champion free software at all costs, just remember not everybody is also going to be a free software purist and that's completely okay. But I want to throw in a left hook out of nowhere and completely change the tide of the conversation. At the end of the day, I don't think software actually matters that much. And I know I just spent an entire video talking about a piece of software, but seriously, hear me out on this. If you want to make a really good video, it is not about your editing. 
One of the things that I find most important is shot composition, and so much so that I actually spend a ton of time composing my shots, as well as for stuff like set design when applicable. Things like story, pacing, or even color are also really important, and that's not something that just a change in software is gonna solve for you. So barring those of you who are more interested in stuff like animation and VFX, it's not about the software you're using, it's about the skills you need to learn. And the only way to get better is to get out there and practice. If you're still watching at this point, you're probably really interested in making your own videos, and you and I both know you have the ability to make something really cool. It doesn't matter what your skill level is at, you can always learn, you can always improve, get out there and do something.